Hello and welcome to Man Eating Plants, the cooking and lifestyle show that highlights the ins and outs, the ups and downs of living a plant-based lifestyle. I'm Rona Lewis, I'm your host, I'm a fitness and lifestyle coach, healthy chef, and author. And today we have a really cool guest. He is a naturalist, I have to get this straight, he's a naturalist and an ethnobotanist. Try saying that five times fast. And he is the owner and teacher at the School of Self-Reliance here in Los Angeles. He's written over a dozen books on everything from wilderness skills to cooking wild plants. So please put your hands together and help me welcome Christopher Nirgis. Hi, Rona. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. What do you got? Well, I wanted to bring you some wild roses, but I couldn't find any. Oh. So I brought you a common weed. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a very special weed. This one is lamb's quarter. It is arguably the most nutritious plants in the world. Really? Yeah, I want you to get more familiar with this today. And where can I find this? Everywhere. Everywhere in the world. The streets of New York, the back alleys of Los Angeles. In New York? It's That's all over amazing. Europe. It's all over, it's all over the world. So I want you to get to know this plant. Okay. Look at its fine characteristics. So it's kind of triangular. Kind of triangular. The white mealiness on the leaf. I do. Right, and the red in the veins. Okay. Right? So you would use this in every way that you would use spinach. Oh, You'd interesting. You'd put it in salads and mm -hmm. soups and stir fries and egg dishes. And yeah, you could taste a little bit. Okay. Now, sometimes yeah. when people try it raw, it does cause a little bit of throat irritation. If you eat a little bit like this, it isn't going to do much. Perfect right? for a host, huh? Do, do you like the flavor? I actually do like yeah. the it, flavor. It, it's, it's, good. A, it's, nice a good, it's a good hearty flavor. And um, it's important to know the right plant. People do go out and they get the wrong thing because they're very enthusiastic and they go yeah, out and they start that, eating things. That's certainly, you know what? Why don't you help me tell the audience what they need to be careful of if they, in fact, went out and tried to forage for some things on their own? Okay, well, it, it's actually very simple. You, you never need to know poisonous plants, by the way. So the main thing is I want everyone to be safe. I do not want you to go out and randomly collect plants from your backyard, from the forest, from the fields, without doing adequate study. Yes, the internet is good. Yes, videos are good. Yes, all of these books are good, but you really want to locate a plant expert wherever you happen to live in the country and go out in the field and study with them. You need to know the individual characteristics of any plant that you're going to eat. And another warning, this is important too, okay. everybody's body chemistry is a little bit different. So Rona, I have a challenge for you. Uh -oh. Why don't we go out into the field, we'll collect some of the wild plants, and let's make a little sample meal that even a New York girl like yourself would like. You know what, first time for everything, I'm up for the challenge. I think what I'd like to do is we're gonna find some, some foods that we can okay. make a salad, a soup, maybe some tea from things that we find in the wild. That's, doesn't that sound fun? All right. All, right. All right. I think we should do it, let's go. Let's go, come on. All right. I'm going outside. Okay, Rona, here we are. And, and here is? We're in a large urban park at the base of the Angeles National Forest, and this is the place where I'm gonna show you all of the plants that we're gonna put into your salad. It's, it's yeah. gonna be some salad, It's huh? gonna be salad and soup and some tea, but this is the place. This is, these little wild areas are great to preserve because you have a, a bit of history, of Native American history, mm -hmm. and you have places where people can go and play, so it's a wonderful spot. There's some lamb's quarter right now. Let's take right. a look at it. And what exactly is lamb's quarter? Lamb's quarter is a, a European native. It's in the goosefoot family, and it's found all over the world. In all of the ways that you would use spinach in your kitchen, you can use this plant. Soups, salads, egg dishes, stir fries, whatever. Okay. But I want Rona to be able to recognize it so Rona doesn't die. Rona does not want to die, That's yes. Great. So take a look at the leaf shape, okay. roughly triangular, toothed edges. And look at this iridescence on the leaf, that white mealiness. It's really, it's pretty and sparkly. Right, when water comes on it, it beads up. When, uh -huh. when on a rainy day, the, 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 the rain is beating up on the leaf. Huh. And then look at the stalk, the red veins in the stalk. Yeah. All of these details are important so you recognize this. Okay. And you don't confuse it with something else. It's very important. 
Okay. Okay, so this is one of the best plants in the world that you should know. It's highly nutritious, uh -huh. good in all kind of dishes. Nice. Right, right. All right, now what about this one? Can we eat this? Okay, well, that one, what does it look like to you? It looks like parsley, that's yeah, why I asked. It's related to parsley. This one's poison hemlock. So this would kill you if you ate this accidentally, and uh, you'd be dead in about an hour. Nice! Yeah, yeah. Let's leave that there. We'll okay. leave it alone. Okay, very good. So this is why you have to do your homework if you're going to go out foraging for wild foods, yeah. because I don't want you dying on me. Yeah, I don't right. want that either. <laughs> yeah. So here's a real challenge for you, Rona. Check out this. Goody, another challenge. I'm going to eat a tree. Well, no, you're not going to eat a tree, but this is a eucalyptus tree. It's okay. a good source of medicine. Do you see all the white dots on the leaves? Yes, I do. It's a bug called a lerp or a psyllid. A lerp. And if you were growing up in Australia in the old days, this would be one of your sources of bush sugar. You could just take a leaf there, Rona, and you chew it off like the dots. Now, eucalyptus is a valuable medicine. Mm. If you have breathing problems, upper respiratory problems, you make an infusion and you inhale the fumes or you drink it. Right. Did you like that, by the way? I, I would have liked it better if it came in chocolate, but no, this it is, was sweet. This is, this is okay. one, one flavor serves all. Let's, <laughs> let's move along. Thanks. All this is wild radish. I, wow. wanted, I wanted you to see this today. It's pretty. So this is just like the radishes we eat. Well, this is the wild version. A wild radish. This is a wild radish. And uh, Rona, when you think of a radish, you think of that little red round thing, don't you? I think about eating the bulb. That little bulb. That's the cultivated radish. The wild one develops a long taproot. Actually, it looks like a white carrot, mm. very bitter. It's uh, tough and woody, so you wouldn't eat it. On this guy, what do you think you would eat? Kind of the whole thing, but really the this part looks like broccoli. Exactly. It's in the mustard family, like broccoli. So you could eat that bud. Mm -hmm. You could eat everything that's tender on the upper plant, the leaves. Huh. And uh, they're very good for your health. They're very good, they say, for preventing cancer if you eat members of the mustard family. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it's spicy. It's mm -hmm. like a mild watercress, but you oh, would nice. use it in all the ways that you would use spinach, let's say, but spicy. You're a health expert. Do you make special juices in the morning? Sometimes I do, yeah. Could you incorporate this somehow in your juices? Oh, easily. Easily. The, the, you, you said it was, it was spicy, right? It's spicy, so, mildly spicy, like watercress. Okay, so this would be a nice offset with carrots and apple juice, so it, would, it would go really well with it. That sounds really good. I might try that myself. We're going to pick a little bit, and we're okay. going to put it into our salad that we're nice. making. Nice. All right, very good. So, Rona, this whole area is really like a natural garden. All the wild foods just growing up on their own in this wet area. Yeah, there's a lot. But I want to test you a little bit to see how well you remember some of the things we've been looking at today. Okay. You recognize this? Yes, it is curly dock. Very good. What can you tell me about curly dock? It's like French sorrel, so it's sour, and you use it for soups and stews. Very good. Very good. What else do we see? I see lamb's quarter. Okay, let's get a little. There's a little bit of lamb's quarter. Tell okay. me about lamb's quarter. Lamb's quarter is like spinach. You can have it raw. You can saute it as well and use it in soups, things like that. Very good. What else do we see in this little wild garden patch? There is some uh, mustard. Let's grab a little mustard leaf. There you go. Mustard. Tell me about mustard. Mustard is, well, you see that in, in stores anyway, like a kale or a colored green, and you would saute that. Very good. What about the mustard you put on hot dogs? Any relation to this? I bet it is. The seeds of a cultivated mustard are ground up, and typically yellow food coloring is added. Oh. 
It's not naturally yellow. Interesting. Okay. Anything else that you see here is noteworthy. I see something I don't think I would want to eat. Hemlock. Okay, good. So this is something that looks like parsley. Right. And um, this is very deadly. Yeah. So a little bit will kill you. If Rona eats this whole thing, Rona is dead in an hour. Great. Very toxic. Now, there was a case where a boy, young boy, made a pea shooter from the hollow stem. So he's putting it in his mouth. He's not actually eating it, and he died in eight hours. Wow. Yeah, so the plant is very toxic. Just eat what you know and what you've positively identified. Okay. okay. So you're, you're doing pretty well. Let's uh, move along. My mother will be so proud. So lamb's quarter, to me, is one of the most versatile things that we've been talking about. It, you use it like all the ways that Forrest Gump used the shrimp. If oh, you remember that episode. From, from the boat, all the, right. the, the shrimp scampi right. and the shrimp tacos. Exactly. You do the same with lamb's quarter. You can put it in a tostada for lettuce. You can put it in a soup. You can put it in a salad. It was amazing how many plants there are that you, are you know, edible. Especially in a dry year like this. Yeah. It's awesome. Welcome back to Man-Eating Plants. I'm your host, Rona Lewis, and if you are watching, you know that naturalist Christopher Nierges and I were out in the wilds of northern Los Angeles because he made me a challenge. This New York City kid living in Los Angeles doesn't know a heck of a lot about natural plants. So he took me out. We picked a bunch of edible plants to bring back, and we cooked them all up and made some wonderful dishes to tell you about. Didn't we? Well, we did good in the field, but you didn't do any cooking. You went into that shower and changed your clothes, and I was slaving over the hot stove. Shh, okay, but I do want you to try everything. We okay. did. We got a lot of stuff. Let's look at some of the plants that we found. This is the nasturtium. The large, round leaf grows around wet areas. Look at these flowers. Really They're brilliant. so pretty. And you're kind of color coordinated now that you changed your clothes. This is the radish. Right. And that was color coordinated with your earlier shirt. I seem to be very good at that. And this is very much like watercress, like a mild watercress. I know okay. we have some mustard greens in here. And remember this long leaf? That was a curly dock. Curly dock, which you use it like French sorrel. Okay. And it's a little sour. And I hope you remember this guy. That is the lamb's quarter. Lamb's quarter, right? Used like what plant? Spinach. Use it like spinach. Okay, great. Show us the salad. Oh, Rona did actually work on the salad. I did. Show us the salad. I did. I incorporated most of these vegetables, and I made a salad using a combination of those and some conventional things as well, some red onion and a little bit of orange as well as some mustard vinaigrette. But I want to taste, I taste some little. of the wild things. With the, with the yeah, vinegar. I think, I think it's a great salad, a really good combination. And we also- Wow, that is really good. Isn't it? Yeah. And it does kind of have that, that radishy taste to it. Will this be in your new cookbook? I think it will. Yeah, okay. And we've got some nettles here. We remember? picked those, that's right. And while you were taking your shower, I, I chopped up the nettles very fine mm -hmm. and cooked it in a miso base. Try a wow. little bit. Okay. Now, you could actually add potatoes and other vegetables. It this looks is, great. Yeah. Have you had nettle soup before? I never have. Yeah. I'm really curious of your reaction. Isn't that good? That's amazing. So people think that because it's nettle, wow. it's not going to taste good. But it's actually a way to eat your medicine. It's good for your entire vascular system. And when people have nettles for uh, allergy and hay fevers, this helps you out, too. That's very yeah, good. It's, it's, it's a good soup. OK, now. And, this is tea. This is our, our beverage. It's made from what? Do you remember? Pineapple weed? Pineapple weed, Pineapple which, is, weed. which is a relative of chamomile. It and smells just like chamomile. It actually adds a nice aroma to the room when you serve it for dinner. You know, it's interesting. It kind of does smell a little bit like pineapple. It's a, it's a very close relative of chamomile, but that's where the name came from. People squeeze the flowers, and it smells like pineapple. It's, that's amazing. And then we found this, but we didn't make tea out of it yet. That's the sage leaves, the wild sage leaves. It smells, it's, oh yeah. It's I a can, strong beverage, so it might, might require some getting acquired too. But you can cook with this too. Put it you in chicken it and like turkey. Sage. Just, it's great for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to know about these bowls. <clears throat> okay, these guys? Sometimes I like to make my own bowls and uh, cookware and so forth. This is just a burl from an alder tree. It okay. had fallen and we cut it off. And it's very solid, but look at the inside. That was all burned and carved out. Yeah, feel that guy. This is heavy. 
have Ebola. Now, this is one of the ways that Native Americans in this area used to cook their food when they didn't have metal here. And I have actually made soup in there using the old, the old way of doing it by heating rocks and then dropping them in, you know, with uh, little tongs and brings the water to a boil and you get good soup. Wow. And mm. what's the other one? The other one, this one took almost no time. This took like 20 hours. This took 20 minutes. This is, wow. a, look at how the yucca, this is the, the dried flower stalk. And this took 20 minutes with my pocket knife, just is, carving it out. This is really light. It's very light. It's light, like you said, it's sort of like balsa wood. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't leak either. When you put liquids in here, it doesn't soak out. Wow. It actually swells up and it will hold in there. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. All right. Okay. Tell me about the acorns. Okay, so this is a mocha hepte full of the, the uh, acorns that have dried. So I'm going to tell you the process of making, of going from the whole acorn to acorn pancakes or bread, okay? Acorn pancakes. Acorn pancakes. Okay. You dry these first, okay? And then you shell them. These are some of the shelled acorns. They're different colors. Different colors because it's different species of acorns and uh, probably from different years of harvest as well. And the next step is to grind them up into a flour. This is one of the rocks that I'll use for grinding. Okay. And it's called a matate, which is a flat stone. Mm -hmm. Have you been to a Mexican restaurant and you see a woman often grinding corn on the matate with the I've stone? Seen, I've seen films. Yeah, yeah you've seen the <laughs> film, okay. It's not quite the same. Right. <laughs> but um, this is what I use to grind the acorns into a flour. Wow, and this, I, is, this and, is the, the flour. This is the resultant flour, however, I leached it first. That means I put it in something that, like a coffee filter, and I poured cold water through it mm -hmm. until the bitterness is gone. So you must do oh. that with acorns because they're very bitter, they're full of tannic acid. And you get that. Which is kind of, it's kind of wheat-ish. It's, kind of, it's kind of wheat-ish. And normally, Rona, you're not gonna eat it like that. This flour, I mix it up 50-50 uh, approximately with wheat flour, mm -hmm. and I make pancakes. Look at that. These look great, don't yeah. they? Yeah, I want you to try one. They look like regular pancakes. All right. Re regular pancakes. I'm going to try a piece. I put okay. a little honey in here in the pancakes, and I put a little mm. raisin in the bread. This is wonderful. Well, I'm glad you tried everything today. This has been amazing, Christopher. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I had an absolute blast, and it was an epiphany. I had no idea that there was so much edible food right outside my front door. I hope you guys had fun, too. Thank you so much for watching Man Eating Plants. I'm your host, Rona Lewis. We'll see you real soon.